Boots, um, I thank you for taking the time to, to visit, and I, I look forward to it, and we've had the pleasure of talking over the years. What are kind of some of your first memories of the association or of special rangers or inspectors uh, as you were growing up? Well, <clears throat> I was raised in the panhandle of, in a corner of Gray County, Texas, and uh, as I remember, in the late 30s and early 40s, when I was just a short teenager, and a teen that the uh, brand inspector would come when we shipped caves and stuff, and the tremendous respect my family and the people there at that ranch where I was raised showed for them, and I grew up with that that admiration for the brand inspectors in the area. <clears throat> you know. Uh Help us clarify, because inspector and special ranger are, are, are two names that are used, and then there was a market inspector and a field inspector. Tell us about that. Well, the field inspector, he was commissioned by the state of Texas with a special Texas ranger commission to give him a full authority as a peace officer anywhere in the state of Texas, and then a field inspector for the Cattle Raisers Association would would be designated as 10 or 12, 15 county area and that he is responsible for. And a market inspector was actually a brand inspector in some terms, was worked at the sale barn where there was a local auction barn and recorded the brands and descriptions on all the cattle and, and the last numbers on trailers that there's unloading cattle in as they come in the market. And the usually the field inspector over an area like that was responsible kind of for that brand inspector and then that brand in <coughs> inspector would notify him of anything that he run into that he thought was suspicious or didn't look right and then that field inspector would investigate that. <clears throat> so while you did inspections, your really primary job was the criminal investigation of those those things that came up from missing reports or inspections or Right. Uh, who was the 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 inspector or special ranger that that you remember that shaped your vision of going to work for a cattle raisers? Well, Alan Jeffries, there's not any question. I I grew up, he was an inspector when I was a little boy. And then when I was grown and an inspector for the cattle raisers, he was still, I worked with him. But uh, I've never known of, of he's kind of like this guy I see on television now. He's a gigantic black man in Florida, Shack, they called him. I've never heard of anything bad about He advertises a lot of stuff, you know, and he's never been involved in any bad stuff that would ruin that reputation. That was Alan. I never knew of anybody saying anything bad about Alan Jeffries. And I have thought throughout my life that uh, I'd like to be like Alan Jeffries was. <laughs> What years did you serve as a special ranger? From, uh, I think it was March of 60 to March of 64, four years to the month. And did you have prior law enforcement experience when you went to work? No, I, I had absolutely no uh, law enforcement. And, and <clears throat> at that time, that in the applications and the writing, and I had any number of people, ranchers, to write the association that I'd like to go to work. None of it ever come up in any of them that I had no prior experience as a law officer. Uh, did, you said you wrote a, a letter to apply. Who was it that, that contacted you? Tell us about uh, kind of the process of being hired and, and getting your commission? Well, of course, uh, 
Charlie Stewart was the uh, president uh, of the cattle raiser, the secretary and general manager and, at the time, and uh, Dolph Briscoe was the president, but they, <clears throat> as I remember. But uh, I just got to, several like John Beggs had been a past president and was highly recognizable in the cattle raisers, and he was the general manager for Wagner's. He wrote them a letter. <clears throat> a fellow from down there at KMA named Mr. Bradley that is a highly respected rancher, a little rancher there. I remember one of the things he wrote them for me and told him that, that I was desirous of going to work for him and that he had been around me and said I've even been around him at the Texas Cowboy Reunion and he conducted himself like a nice young man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I bet they got a kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've been to the Texas Cowboy Reunion out back, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, but uh, several of the ranchers and people, the J.A.s, wrote them a letters of recommendation for me, but... Uh, uh, I was five years working at it, and I, I had right close to giving up because, of, you know, I didn't have a good education. I had no law enforcement, and uh, but uh, I, uh, I guess uh, persistence is is the word there that I just kept going, and when I had an opportunity to contact somebody that I knew and, and that knew me, I'd get them to write them a letter and tell them that I was still desirous of going to work. And uh, Johnny Biggs wrote from Wagner's, I was working there, that uh, he, uh, that I was very desirous to go to work for him and that, that he would recommend me, but he would hope that I stayed there at the ranch and that I had a job there. And... Uh, and then when Dub Drace had been an inspector for 15 or 20 years, and, and he was working that area, he lived in Lubbock, but he'd come down there and stayed in hotels and stuff. They didn't go home of a night like most of them do now. And uh, he did all the work there at Fort Wagner's back there in the late 40s and 50s and early 60s. And uh, he... Uh, <laughs> He had got ready to quit, and he was going to work for the Spade Ranches to manage one of their ranches. And <clears throat> he told them he had worked with me there at Wagner's a lot when he's working them shipments. He was pretty influential in getting them to harm me. And then I uh, went and stayed with him, him and his wife, in Lubbock for a few days and then into a hotel, and they had me to stay out there and work that country along the New Mexico line for about three months. And then <clears throat> they just contacted me by letter one day and told me they want me to move under the cap. This is all they said, just move under the cap rock, <laughs> preferably Spur or Paducah, establish a residence and send us your phone number. And so <laughs> I went to spur and piddled around and then on over to Paducah and I, the reason I went to Paducah I thought it was a little closer to Vernon and I was dating a girl in Vernon <laughs> so I, I went to Paducah I didn't know anybody in either place so so how, were you ever officially sworn in what what was the process there uh, I don't ever remember other than just told me what my territory was and Dub gave me his car and uh, took me for three or four days around in a 15 county area but nobody ever and, and they just told me that I was hard and, and they never did me any training and of any kind, to my knowledge, I just went to work. And uh, and as I previously told you, shortly after I went to work, I realized how little I knew about 
the law enforcement part of it. And it's, you know, I, I knew how to brand inspect the herd, somebody loading cattle on a railroad car. But, uh, <clears throat> and I heard about that a new school in 1960s for sheriffs and their deputies at Austin, and I contacted them and asked if I could go to that and then contacted the Sheriff's Association. They agreed, and so I went to that, and I, I, I kind of learned the difference in the DA and the county attorney there. You know. But uh, uh, I went after that several times to Austin to schools there. But uh, did, you, did you have a badge? Yeah. Yeah, they gave me a badge, and I had my own, I had a pistol, still got it, a little pistol, same one. It's a, just a little five-shot thirty-eight revolver, Smith & Wesson, and uh, I carried it all the time I worked for the association when I was carrying a gun, but uh, <clears throat> it uh, didn't have to qualify. I, we, I never qualified. And all the years I worked for them, but after going to law enforcement academy after 90 for the ranch here, you know, well, then I started having to qualify, and then Leo Hickman had come by here and qualify me for years, go over here at our little gun range and qualify me <clears throat> every year or two. And, but, uh, it, it's amazing to me, Scott, to look back at the, I didn't know anything about the law and anything. And they gave me a set of brand books and and then a little book that, that had the Texas brand laws in it regarding the, the uh, misdemeanor branding of a like not registering the brand and stuff like that, but and uh, <clears throat> I went from there. But I, I, looking back, I, I I don't really know. It's amazing to me that they'd hire you and just send you out there like that, and uh, they give you a fifteen county area, and uh, they give me two or three names. Of ranching people in this country that I could contact if I needed some information. Togo was one of them and that would you could depend on if you wanted to ask him about some old boy. He wouldn't tell him that you was asking about him, you know. And they told me that. But <clears throat> what about that brand book? Can you kind of describe what the brand book was? Is it, you know, you see in a lot of these shows, it's a neat little old book, but in reality, it was a little different than that. Oh, this this was a, a big, just a kind of like a, an old notebook it had a clip that you opened up, and it, it had three of them, a set of three of them with over 10,000 brands in them, and, and they were... You could look anything up if you they were alphabetical uh, on your brands, uh, and then your character brands would come under as marked characters, and uh, uh, and you had to know that uh, you know, like one that's always I've noticed here is the JYs, a guy that didn't know f on, on the JYs. How why he'd go look under the J's for the JY. They called the JY brand, but you would find that under the Y's because you start at the left hand corner at the top and it would be registered alphabetically according to that, so it'd be under the YJ's in the brand book down here in the county office, you know, and a few things like that I had to learn, and then we'd used to have to go to the ever courthouse in your district every year or so and record any brands that had been registered since you were there and turn them in to the association and they had add that where you could put it in your brand books that would carry them in the trunk of your car. And uh, But uh, I've wondered what they done with all them brand books because now they use computers and laptops and 
and the body, you know, they, they wouldn't use them brand books. The Manford actually gave me his, and I used it for a number of years, so Did I still you? have that book. Like I'll that. say, well, good. That 10,000 brands, though, that was just for your area. That wasn't a statewide book. Yours was just for for your general area that you worked. Is that correct? I guess. I, I, I really, I can't, I'm not going to say I can't remember uh, if them things.